Make the darkness run and hide You bring the broken back to life Only you can, only you can You set me free from every chain You fill my heart with songs of praise Only you can, only you can Jesus, you're the only reason That I'm even breathing I am wide awake My heart beats Only for your glory My hands reach Up for you to hold me My soul sings Father, you are holy My feet dance To rhythm, to rhythm Every beat is calling Calling out your name Good morning, everybody. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is here. The Lord is good. And we are here for one purpose alone, and that is to bring God the glory.
Spirit. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. God, thank you for the freedom that we can lift up the name that is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh God, we worship you. Blessed Trinity, we enthrone you in our midst. You are the reason why we are here, oh God to exalt you, to acknowledge you. O Holy Spirit, we welcome you, O God. O Lord Jesus, we adore you. O our Heavenly Father, we bow down our spirit before you. We understand that it is only because of you we can move, we can live, and we have our being. We thank you, Lord, for the strength we thank you, Lord, for the sound mind. We thank you, Lord, for the protection. We thank you, Lord, for providing everything that we need. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. And each day, oh God, you are strengthening us. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, for your gentle reminder upon each one of us when we make mistakes and when we disobey you. Holy Spirit, we pray that your voice will be so loud when you convict us, O oh God, and give us, Lord, a will to obey your words. Oh, thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and just to forgive us once we humble ourselves before you. That's why, Lord, as a church, and I am the foremost, O oh God, that we are coming into your throne of grace and asking you, Lord, to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Lord, forgive us, O Lord. Make us the kind of man and woman that you called us to be. We worship you. We worship you. Church, can we just lift our voices up and say, God, we worship you. 
We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We adore you, living God. Oh, blessed Trinity, we adore you. Blessed Trinity, we enthrone you. Build your throne, oh God. Blessed Trinity, make your way, oh God. Lord, let your will be done in our life, oh God. Lord, we surrender everything, Lord. Things that we don't understand, oh God. Things that there is no explanation, Lord. God, we submit it. We submit it before your throne. Because one thing we know, that all things will work together for good to those who love you. Therefore, we submit ourselves before you now. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Can we shout hallelujah? God is good. Come on, let's shout hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. And while you're doing that, let us greet our brothers and sisters that are watching live right now. There are many of them. Tell them it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Welcome, Skyway family. And welcome to our friends. Praise the Lord. We are so honored to have the men of God in this house. Later on, you will hear from them. Ooh, can we give another round of applause to King Jesus? And also to our guests and visitors and friends, can we just exalt, can we just like, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Dudley and our brethren, Brother Noel and his beautiful wife. Come on, let's give them a skyway. Welcome. <laughs> Praise God. God is good. Amen. All right. Are we ready to declare the promises of God to our life? Skyway family, we know that our God is alive. I'm not going to get you to stand up because I know you've been standing up for quite some time. But it is important to declare the promises of God, isn't it? No matter what situation is going on, we know the word of God will stand forever. We understand that heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will remain forever. Amen. This is the promises of the Lord to each one of us. He wants to bless us. Our God came to give us life and to have it more abundantly. Amen. So let us receive this, believe this, claim it, because God truly wants to fulfill his promise to our life. Amen. Let us declare it. I declare that I am blessed. I declare that I am blessed with God's supernatural wisdom and I have a clear direction for my life. I declare that I am blessed with creativity, with courage, with ability, and with abundance. I declare that I am blessed with a strong will, with self-control and self-discipline. Skyway, are we believing this? Yes. Amen. How come I cannot hear you? Amen. Let us believe it again. I declare that I am blessed with a strong will, with self-control and self-discipline. I declare that I am blessed with great family, with good friends, with good health, with faith, favor, and fulfillment. I declare that I am blessed with success, with supernatural strength, with promotion, and with divine protection. I declare that I am blessed with an obedient heart and with a positive outlook on life. I declare that any curse ever spoken over me, any negative word that has ever come against me is broken right now. I declare that I am blessed 
in the city. I am blessed in the country. I am blessed when I go in, and I am blessed when I go out. I declare that everything that I put my hands on to do is going to prosper and succeed. I declare that I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's now listen to our announcement. Praise God. Hey, Skyway family. We're glad you were able to make it today, whether you're joining us online or in person. At Skyway, we offer many ways to stay connected with God throughout your whole entire week. So make sure to join us for these reoccurring events. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., we offer a Sunday service. You may anticipate a welcoming into a secure and caring environment. Our Sunday morning services is a celebration of our common identity in Christ. We'd love to see you and your family. So come see us in person at 76 Crawford Boulevard or watch the live stream on Facebook. Join us for our Sunday service and let's praise God together. Also, our Real Talk services with Pastor Alice takes place every Sunday at 7 p.m. Make sure to join us on our Facebook live stream as Pastor Alice discusses how the Bible interprets real-life circumstances and other people's testimony. Let's have a Real Talk. We offer midweek prayer meetings with Pastor Jim every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. on Facebook Live and 7 p.m. in person. Take some time out of your day for a refreshing time for God's Word. Our youth services are held every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Come join us through our Google Meet if you are between the ages of 13 and 19. There are games, challenges, a social lesson, and the Word to be found here. You can also join us for a special in-person service once a month, so keep tuned for additional information. Please contact Lorene Sanchez for further information if you are interested. Our Friday evening services with Pastor Jim takes place every Friday at 7 p.m. Join us on Facebook for a live stream and to discover what God's Word has in store for you. Calling all young worshipers ages 12 and above are invited. We welcome you to join us for our extended worship team every Saturday at 11 a.m. Join us for worship, devotion, and fellowship. Please contact Abigail Salvanera for additional information. Finally, we have our home Bible study groups. Contact Bill Bonifacio to join our group and begin connecting and fellowshipping with others through our home Bible study groups. We have a variety of options for you to contribute an offering to Skyway Christian Assembly. If you're visiting us in person, you can give your chosen contribution by either filling out your given envelope or using our Interact machine, which takes all debit cards, MasterCard, and Visa. You can also donate by e-transferring your preferred amount to give at skywayca.org if you are online and watching our Facebook broadcast. If you are in need of prayer, please contact us through our Facebook page and we would gladly pray for you. Visit skywayca.org to see our most recent Sunday and Real Talk services, as well as discover more about who Skyway Christian Assembly is as a church. These are our weekly events, Skyway. To stay up to speed on what's going on here at Skyway Christian Assembly, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, Skyway. Guess what? Sosa is coming here on June 11th and the 18th from 11.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. There will be a lot of activities and we hope to see you there. Hi, Starry, calling all of you. It's that time of the month again. Join us for our in-person news service on Friday, June 17th, starting at 4.30 p.m. Join us for some games, fellowship, and the word. Remember to invite your friends and families and we hope to see you there. Hey Skyway family, happy Father's Day to all of the men here. 
we are excited to invite you to our Father's Day special. Coming together to cherish and celebrate all of the loving and hardworking fathers out there. In Proverbs 20, verse 7, it says, The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after. Join us after Sunday service at 10 a.m. on June 19, 2022 for special presentations and many more. You won't want to miss it. See you there. God, we sing Hey everybody, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We're constantly updating it with new content and never seen before content. So if you want to get the latest from Harvest, hit the subscribe button. You'll receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The way they're going to do it and the way we're going to do it is with a power we don't possess naturally. It's supernatural power, a power to do beyond what we have done before, a power to change the world, a power to be a witness, a power to share your faith, a power to turn the world upside down. Good news, we'll read about this later, when the Holy Spirit is poured out on those first century believers on the day of Pentecost. That same power that set the church into motion is available to you right now. Because we read Peter saying in Acts 2.39, this promise is to your children and to the Gentiles and all who have been called by the Lord our God. What promise? The promise of the Holy Spirit. The word that is used here for power is noteworthy. It's the Greek word dunamis. Years ago, there was a man named Alfred Nobel. We know him best for the Nobel Peace Prize. But before he created the Nobel Peace Prize, he created a an explosive substance known as dynamite, but he didn't have a name for it at first. He invented this, this explosive device or this explosive substance, and he went to a friend who knew Greek. He said, what is the Greek word for explosive? And the man said, it's the Greek word dunamis. And so Nobel says, okay, I'm gonna call it dynamite. So basically the Bible is saying, God is gonna give you explosive dynamite power in your life from the Holy Spirit to do what he has called you to do. This is real power. People want power. <laughs> you know, when guys get cars, they like to get the most powerful engine so they can brag on it, right? You know what I have under this hood? We like power. We like horsepower. We like manpower. Oh, we like political power too. Just watch the news and you see people grappling for more political power. God is talking about spiritual power, power to change your life, power to change the world. One of the ministries we do at our church is into assisted living homes. And there's a man that was teaching one of these studies. His name is Steve. He was telling the older folks how God wanted to use them. And he told them, he's teaching from the book of Acts, how the early church impacted their world because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And he encouraged them to do the same. So there's a lady, 82 years old, and she prayed every day for God to fill her with the Holy Spirit and that he would give her a boldness to share the gospel. And so while Steve was leading the study, this lady raised her hand. She said, I have a praise report. I've been praying for God's power in my life and I was able to lead an 85 year old gentleman to Christ the other day. Isn't that great? So this isn't just for 18 year olds. This is for 82 year olds. This is for everybody to go out into all of your world and preach the gospel. And you can do this. I talked about this power of the Holy Spirit that the early church had. You can have this same power in your life to be a bold witness for Jesus Christ. You say, well, what do I need to do to receive this power? Jesus gives the answer when he says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So simple, just ask him. You ask him for this power. God loves to give gifts. Do you love to give gifts? I love to give gifts to people and it's really hard for me 
to not show a person the gift I've gotten them. Like if I get them something for Christmas, I want to give it to them before Christmas. God is eager to give the gifts of the Spirit to you. He is eager to pour His Holy Spirit on you. All you have to do is ask Him. So I would like to lead you in another prayer right now. And this is for every Christian watching me. And this is a prayer where we will ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. You could pray this prayer out loud. Maybe you're with a group of people watching. Maybe you're all alone. But you pray this prayer. God will give you this power to share your faith. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, pray this after me. Lord Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a boldness such as I have never known before. Give me the courage to share my faith. Use me to change my world. I receive that power now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Did you pray with me? God heard that prayer. Well, I didn't feel anything, Greg. It has nothing to do with how you feel. Do you feel something when you put gas in your car, when you go down, or if it's an electric car, when you plug it into the wall? Do you have an emotional experience every time you fuel your car? No, you don't. But you fuel it over and over again, right? The Bible says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And that phrase, be filled, means constantly be filled. So we need to pray every day, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God will fill you, he'll refill you, and he'll refill you again. Sometimes you'll feel something, other times you'll feel nothing. It's not about what you feel. It's about the promise of God. We just prayed for that power. Pray for that power again as you get up tomorrow. Pray for the power again for the next day. And like that lady I mentioned earlier, she prayed for that power to share her faith and she led an older gentleman to the Lord. I believe God will use you to do the same. Thanks for watching and until next time, God bless you. Amen, amen. Can we once again give a clap offering to our God? The precious Holy Spirit is our partner right now. The wonderful promise of our Lord is, I will not leave you as an orphan. This is the Lord Jesus' promise to us. But rather, I will send forth the Holy Spirit to be with us. So I am respectfully inviting you for our real talk for the whole month of, month of June. You know, I will be talking about the Holy Spirit. So I hope you can join me in our Facebook Live so that we can learn more about the precious Holy Spirit that is actively working with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And also, Skyway, thank you for truly honoring the Lord in your giving. This church is standing strong. It is because of your generous giving. Thank you, everybody. Praise God. Let us pray as we bless the work of the Lord. God, you know exactly our need. We thank you, Lord, that you made a promise that you are the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask and think. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you for blessing my brothers and sister. And in return, Lord, they are joyful and truly, Lord, willingly bringing what is rightfully belongs to you. We pray, God, that you will bless this offering, that it will continually be used to propagate your holy words. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are also blessing your people because they have given out, O oh God, of their obedient heart, out of faith, O oh Lord, your people, O oh God, have cheerfully honored you in their giving. Bless them, O oh God. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before we will sing this song, I am just also wanting to invite everyone. You know, we said Sosa. What does Sosa mean? It means the Scarborough of Ontario, seniors of 
Seniors of Ontario Scarborough Association. What is this is we have partners with the seniors in the Scarborough area. So for the month, for the month of June, they doesn't have a community center to use. And we have such a good relationship with them and we told them, you are most welcome to come and join us and use our facility. So this will be the seniors in the area. There's going to be about 50 to 70 individuals that will be coming here this coming Saturday and also next Saturdays. So if you wanted, like you know, you are most welcome to come and join us. Yes, we are going to have fellowship. And these seniors, they want to do exercise. It means they're going to be doing some physical exercise, a little bit of dancing, the line dancing. You will enjoy it. And then, you know, Brother Bill has been teaching them the computer literacy. And then we are also teaching them about the scam that is happening, specifically targeting the seniors. So for two consecutive Saturdays, they will walk in to our facility. So I am respectfully asking you, just come, love on them, and let them feel the presence of God. Amen? We are so thankful that we have this opportunity to minister to them. So come and join us. Amen? God bless you all. Captivating my soul 
Lord God, you know, um, we have, uh, I have my neighbor here with me, a good looking uh, young man, <laughs> uh, with our friend, of course, Dr. Dudley Meyer, and uh, can we just uh, welcome them? Uh, yesterday, Brother Noel kind of spoke to me, and he said, while he was praying uh, early in the morning, the Lord spoke to him, and impressed in his heart that, you know, if he could pray for Brother Rodell, and how many of you know that we need as much as prayer as we can for Brother Rodell? Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes God speaks to uh, other people that God can use uh, in, so that God can do his mighty works. Uh, he can manifest his um, uh, miracle power. Amen. So I'm going to call Brother Noel here. Come up here on the stage, my brother. Come here. He's going to lead us before I preach the gospel and the word of God. He's going to lead us into prayer. And I'm going to call Brother Dudley to come up here on the stage. Brother Dudley, come up here while Brother Noel leads us in prayer. And I would like to ask the whole congregation to please support us as Brother uh, Noel pray for Brother Odell, okay? <clears throat> Yeah, on. Let's continue with the sense and what we feel in the church this morning. It's all about the Holy Spirit. So could I ask you to take a second, take a deep Just breath in, up, release it, and let's call upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank hallelujah. You, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. This is the day that you have made. We will yes, rejoice, God. God. Yes, God. We will be happy. We will be thankful thank because, Lord, we live in a country that you have blessed us with. Yes, Lord. We thank you for all these people that's assembled here this morning, God. Call it upon your name, God. Scripture tells us, are any among you sick? Oh, they should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil Hallelujah. in the name of the Lord. And their prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. Yes, Lord. And the Lord will make them well. If anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. Since God has the power to heal us spiritually, emotionally, and physically, prayer is one of the most powerful tools available to us when we pray to God. We display our faith. Could we all join in prayer? We speak the name of Jesus over Rodell, over Rodell, over Rodell. In his hurting, God. In his pain, God. We pray for your healing, God. That a breakthrough will happen today, God. Today. Today. Jesus' miracles happen when you move. Strongholds are broken when you move. We need a move in Rodel's body right now, God. Right now, God. Your word says, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. We pray miracles over Rodell's life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray 
Father, that the medical staff attending to Rodell will be filled with your divine wisdom and direction, God. Lord, we pray for everything that's going on in his life, God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who is alive. He's not dead. He hears us. He understands us. He knows everything about us, Lord. Lord, touch Rodell's life, God. For the few years I have known that man, God, he's somebody I admire. It is a good person that I can stand and talk and talk about the word of God. So God, you know where his heart is, where he is with you, God. And we ask you in a special way, God, let him be healed in the name of Jesus. Rodel, rise up. And God will heal every part of your body. God, we serve a great physician, a sympathizing Jesus, Dr. Jesus. He's going to touch Rodel's body. Let's all believe, all believe. Call upon God. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. Rodel will be healed in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are calling upon you, Lord. You are the only one we can call on. And we know right now you are hearing our prayer. And we know, God, the testimony that Rodel is going to give. He will stand and shout praises to you, God, for, to, for what you are doing in his body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this present time, I would like um, Jasmine, Pastor Alice, and you to stand. Could you guys? As the song says, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. So this morning, God, we know what this family has been going through. Lord, and we ask for a special blessing on them, God. And in Numbers 6, 24 to 7 says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I ask Pastor Dudley to pray for this family and to pray for this church. I'll pray and I also believe God wants me to say something afterwards. Is that okay? Father, we just thank you. We know this is a wonderful pastoral team and an amazing body of Christ. We come in agreement with the many, many prayers that have been offered for this family, for Skyway, and also for this community. We pray, oh God, that you will strengthen this community, even through this experience, that one of them need the whole body to get to the position of prayer, and even today, as we come in agreement that Rodell will be healed, that his family totally healed. We, we, we pressing in on the favor of God this morning. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for doing this and out of the ashes of these moments there will come a stronger people, a stronger Skyway, a stronger Rodell, Jasmine, Alice, Jim, and all the family represented here and the ones abroad through the goodness of God and the miracle working power of God just as you declared earlier on and we thank you God we thank you Father for your uncommon favor today that no one in this place will ever be able to say that God does not love them that Father does not love them and Father has a healing message for the entire world through you. So we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May, may I say something? Okay. 
you, you know, I, I was so thrilled to be here this morning. I had planned to come. You know, and then my brother, uh, Chaplain Noel, called me and said, you know, I feel I want to go. I said, I'll be there with you, brother. But when I heard Pastor Alice lead you in speaking words, blessings, making declarations, I know that you've tapped into something here. And I know you've had teachings on this, but I want to give you, we train our chaplains a global chaplain center and certify them as ambassadors of spoken blessing. This is something that was hidden from the church. This, if you, when Jacob, when Jacob was on the rock, he saw angels going up and angels coming down. The ones going up were taking up a prayers and we, from the, the body of Christ, knows how to pray. We pray and we pray and we pray. But the angels coming down were bringing down blessings. Now, Father God has given us a mouth to speak. And one of the things that we have to do, especially in these times, is learn to make, translate these spoken words from our Bible into blessings that anyone can accept. Now, anyone meaning whether they're an atheist, whether they're agnostic, whether they have some other religion, they may say, no, no, I don't want your prayer. But nobody will ever refuse a blessing you just have to translate it into the language of the culture the language of the community anywhere in the world you can use this so what i would like to challenge you as a church to take those blessings that you've been those declarations you've been making and turn them into blessings and now i know you keep keep praying we believe in for rodell and, and his future recovery and his strength and all this but speak blessings into his life speak blessings into each other and even the little children can do this anyone you have a treasure you know jesus talks about treasure in earthen vessels and we are vessels we carry this and very few people use it i've never been to a church people make declarations and so but intentionally getting this into your dna you have a treasure here that you can use. Now, I, I want to suggest, when you have the seniors come, speak words of blessing to them. Whatever, even if they can't speak English, they'll know by your smile, by your, by your, your countenance, by your goodwill, they will feel the vibrations of your spirit. And they'll be challenged to find out about your God. So I encourage you and I thank you for, for this teaching you gave this morning. I hope you give me a copy of it because it's so well ordered and it's such a treasure that we can use in a hurting community in Canada. God bless you. Thank you. Give them a big hand. Thank you, Dr. Dudley Meyer. Brother Noel, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I just wanted to. You may all be seated. I just quickly wanted to share. Dr. Dudley runs a Bible school. Mm. And I enroll into the Bible school. One subject. And I humbly letting you know, I fail the course. <laughs> no, you did not fail. You just did not do it. I really failed. <laughs> Because you don't. So, can you forgive me? <laughs> <clears throat> well, praise God. You know, um, if I don't know Brother Noel and Dr. Dudley Meyer, you know, if someone comes to me and says, I feel the Lord like, uh, I, you know, I'll be praying for, this and that, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to easily just let them do what they ask me to do. But since I know Brother Noel, he's a man of God, amen, I know him well. <laughs> and Dr. Dudley Meyer said, you know, uh, maybe this is God's ways, you know, and uh, one of God's ways. We know uh, prayer works, especially 
you know, for those people who walk right before God. Amen? And we need as much as prayer as we can because life is at stake and we have to, you know, fight the battle that God wants us to fight. Okay? Uh, for the sake of, you know, um, not just only saving, but also restoring the life of a person, you know, by the power of the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen? <clears throat> You know, Greg Laurie shared uh, something so powerful a while ago, and so what we're going to do, because this, this uh, specific month and week, uh, the Nation of Israel is celebrating one of the uh, festivities that God commanded them, you know, when God brought them out, out of Egypt. And, you know, uh, when God commanded them to celebrate these uh, seven major festivities for the nation of Israel. They're just like uh, some kind of form of celebration or a religious, part of their religious uh, practices without understanding that they have significant meaning in the future. So as we go through these scriptures today, you and I will be able to understand why God commanded the nation of Israel to observe, specifically what we call today, they're celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, okay? This is where we get the religious organization or Christian religious organization, Pentecostal, okay? And the reason why they call themselves Pentecostal, because they believe in the infilling and baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to start our scriptures in Leviticus 23, verse 15 to 21, so that we can trace back the origin of this, you know, Feast of Pentecost, or in other words, a Feast of Weeks. <clears throat> Leviticus 23, verse 15 to 21. I'm sorry, but I think that person... Why? It's not good? Thank you, Lord. Okay, this sounds better? Okay, great. Okay, let's, so let's just read the scriptures. And this is what God commanded the nation of Israel through the prophet Moses. And it says here, And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath. As we all know that every seven day, you know, uh, they, the nation of Israel uh, observed this uh, Sabbath day, okay, every Saturday. And then it says here, from the day that you brought the shift of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. That is what, we, if you multiply seven weeks of seven days, that would total 49 days, right? And so after that, brings 50 days, okay? And then it says here, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. You shall bring from your dwelling dwellings to wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. <clears throat> it's a little too loud. Um, just kind of bring it down a little bit. Okay. And you shall... They are the first fruits to the Lord, and you shall offer with the bread seven lambs of the first year without blemish, one young bull and two rams. They shall be as burnt offerings to the Lord with their grain offerings and their drink offerings as an offering made by fire for a sweet aroma to the Lord. Then you shall sacrifice one kid of the goats as a sin offering, and two male lambs of the first year as a sacrifice of a peace offering. The priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit as a wave offerings before the Lord. With the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And you shall proclaim on the same day that it is a holy convocation or a holy gathering to you. You shall do no customary work on it. It shall be a statute forever 
in all your dwellings throughout your generation. Let's just bow our head and pray. Thank you, God. Father, we just want to say thank you for the word you are giving to us today. And Lord, we pray, God, that as the Lord, as our Lord Jesus Christ has said, that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. And so we pray, God, as we go through reading your words, oh God, may you bring life into every word that we hear today, that our spirit may live. And we thank you, God, for sending your, to, uh, your servant here. Lord, praying with us on behalf of Brother Odell and Jasmine, Lord, we just want to say thank you, God. We believe you heard and you answered our prayer because you are our faithful God. Yes, Lord, you are our faithful God who never fail fulfilling what you promise according to your word. We just want to say thank you, God. Bless your people. Bless your word. We give you all the glory, God, and all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's give the Lord a big hand. We're going to say a little bit uh, longer today, so let me just start with this, okay? What is the word Pentecost? We have to understand the word Pentecost so that when you meet people who say, well, I am a Pentecost, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal, you might say, what is Pentecostal, okay? So it came from the Greek word Pentecostos, means 50th. We just read in the scriptures a while ago, count seven weeks, okay, 49, and on the 50th day, that's where we get the word 50 yet, Pentecostos. It came from the Hebrew word Shavuot, okay, that's why, you know, the nation of Israel is celebrating Shavuot today, okay, means feast of weeks or first fruits, or feast of first fruits, okay. And, of course, the reason why, you know, you will only find the word Pentecost three times in the New Testament. Okay? Uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, and then Paul uses it, uh, of course, in the book of Acts and in the book of Corinthians. Because, you know, at that time, uh, the Greek language is widely being used at the time, okay, when the Lord Jesus Christ came down. So it's an alternative word for the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of First Fruits. And so they use the word Pentecostos. Okay, can we say the word Pentecostos? Oh, now you are a Greek scholar. Knowing one word will make you a Greek scholar. Amen. So remember, guys, the alternative word for Pentecostos in Hebrew, which is Shabuot, Feast of Weeks or First Fruits. Fruits, okay? Now, there are some few directive orders that God has given for the nation of Israel to observe, which has a significant meaning in our present days, okay? The Feast of Weeks or Pentecost during the time of the nation of Israel, first thing that they must do is they must bring the first fruits as an offering to God. May it be an animal, may it be a, a, a produce of their crops, okay? They had to bring the first fruits as an offering to God. Every time they come to the temple, every time they worship God, they have to bring an offering unto God. No wonder we as a Christian, when we come to the church, part of our worship is we bring an offering to God. Amen. You know, I used to remember when I was, when I used to go in the Catholic church, some people when they, you know, uh, as the, how do you call that, they're, they're, they have a long stick, you know, we've been there, right? Uh, how the Catholic collect the offering, right? And, and you know, the guy will kind of, if it's too far, so he's going to go like this, right? And so someone was sitting beside me and he said, uh, can I have a change? Can you break this? Okay. <laughs> so uh, there are people like that, even in the Christian churches. You know, uh, when I came here in Canada, maybe those people are not really, um, you know, uh, uh, they don't really know God personally. So they don't really understand the concept of giving to God and giving what belongs to God. So part of our worship, okay, as the nation of Israel practiced it in those days, so we too, as okay, being believers, 
when we come into the house of God, we give an offering to God. Amen? And of course, when we give an offering to God, the offering that we offer to God, of course, we worship God, we praise God, we offer prayer unto God. But one of the things that God commanded us to bring is a tangible offering that support the needs of the work of God. Amen? You know, in the Old Testament, when God commanded the nation of Israel, 11 tribes has to go out and work while one tribe, okay, does the work in the temple. And those 11 tribes bring the offering to sustain the needs of the temple and the workers in the temple. It is the same concept today in many Christian churches. Amen? There are full-time workers in the church. There are part-time workers in the church. There are volunteer workers in the church. And so thank God for all our volunteers. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So they shall do no customary work. That's why, you know, we dedicate this day to God. Amen. God commanded us to be in his presence. As God commanded the nation of Israel to be in his presence. As we all know, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. There is healing. Amen. What else? There is life. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of things that God can do. That's why God wanted his children to be in his presence. Hebrew 10.25, we must not forsake the assemblies together as the manner of some those who forsake the assemblies when God commanded and even expect his children to be in his presence will miss a lot of things that God wants to give to his children how many of you remember when I said that unless you have a valid reason not to be in the church then don't be in the church amen but if you and I doesn't have a valid reason okay not to be in the church we have to be in the church. Amen. I always say this, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, I was so tired that night and I did not even realize that it was Sunday the next day. I was still, you know, trying to get some sleep. My wife says, wake up, wake up. I said, why? We have to go to the church. What day it is? It's Sunday. It's the day of the Lord. And, and you're a Christian and you're the pastor. I said, okay, yeah, I forgot I have to preach this Sunday. <laughs> We must not forsake, okay, our assemblies together. That's why the Bible says they shall do no customary work like your employment work. Many Christians today are getting too much over over time without realizing the importance of being in the presence of God. I would rather be in the presence of God in exchange for a simple silver or dollar. Amen. I would rather be in the presence of God. It is a holy convocation to the nation of Israel. Why it is holy? Because they set it apart just for God. You know, when people set a day apart for God in honoring God, the Bible says, those who honor me, God said, I will honor them. Amen. Amen. You know, when God honors you and me, guys, there's no limit on what God can do for you and me. Amen? Amen? So if we honor God, God will honor you back. Amen? So let me just show you. There are five significant representations of the Feast of Weeks or First Fruits or Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came down and in our present days today. So when you hear... Okay, Pentecost, it means Feast of Weeks or First Fruits. When God commanded the nation of Israel to observe this seventh feast, okay, and particularly the, the Feast of Weeks, they have no clue, they have no idea what God really meant. So for them, they just practice it. Okay, this is what God said. This, this is what God said we will do. And so we will do it without asking themselves, does these things has a significant meaning in the future? That's why when the Lord Jesus Christ came down, they know the scriptures, but they never understood the scriptures. Because if they understood the scriptures, especially the religious leaders during the time that the Lord Jesus Christ came down, 
Just like what the Apostle Paul said, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. How many of you know there's a difference of knowing the scriptures in understanding the scriptures? Amen? And so, for us, we are, I would say we are privileged and blessed to understand the significant meaning why God commanded the nation of Israel to observe this seventh feast that the, Israel, that the nation of Israel is now celebrating. Amen? How many of you know that God is a God of feast? He wants His children to celebrate and rejoice in His presence. Amen? Hello? God is not a God of, uh, what? Um, um, I'm trying to find a word. Um, no, no, no. It's okay. I, if, I, if I will remember it, I, 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 will, I will mention it. God is a God of celebration. He loves to see his people rejoice in his presence. Amen. So let me show you five significant representation of the Feast of Weeks. First of all, it pertains to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The nation of Israel doesn't have any idea when God commanded them to observe this. 1 Corinthians 15, 20, the Bible says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. When God commanded the nation of Israel to uh, observe or celebrate this feast of weeks or first fruits, they don't have any idea as God is about to send his only begotten son who took the form of man just to take your place and mine, to pay the payment for our sins, who died on the cross on your behalf and mine. God is actually showing, okay, to the nation of Israel without them knowing it, but we know it now. It talks about or it, it pertains to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Being the first fruits. How many of you know, knowing that Jesus rose from the dead, it gives us a joy. Amen? Knowing if we die, we shall live with Christ. Amen? Along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the nation of Israel has no clue. What God is actually sending a message when God send, when God will send His only begotten Son, He is showing to the world that His Son will conquer hell and death. Amen? He will rise again from the dead. Hallelujah. The second um, significant meaning of the Feast of Pentecost or Feast of Weeks, it pertains to the Pentecost during the time of the early church. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. If we will read it, okay. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. It says there, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Oh my goodness. Why they were in one, why, why they were in one, in one place with one accord? Because before Jesus went up to heaven, he gave them this command, tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. And what is the promise of the Father? The coming of the Holy Spirit. What is the purpose of the coming of the Holy Spirit? So that they will be filled, baptized, and empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, can I say this to you guys? One of the things that many Christians are missing, okay, because they miss to come to the church, okay, is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. God gives a special privilege for those people who honor God on the day that God expects them to be in one place. And so the church are gathering together. They honor what Jesus said. And exactly on the 10 days, okay, 40 days, Jesus stayed with them. After his resurrection, and when Jesus went up to heaven, 10 days after that completes 50 days, the Holy Spirit came down. And when the Holy Spirit came down to the first church, they were filled by the Holy Spirit. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell these guys as a Christian, when you and I come into the church, you don't even know what the Holy Spirit will do for you. 
Because God knows your personal needs that many people doesn't even know. But the Holy Spirit knows your personal need. Amen? And when the Holy Spirit comes to you, He will do exactly what you need to be empowered in serving God. Amen? So as a Christian, please don't forsake the assemblies as the manner of some. Amen? Unless you have a valid reason. It pertains, okay, to the Pentecost during the time of the early church. They were all in one place, okay, in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. That's this word. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Why all? Because they were all in one place. They all honor God. Amen? You know, many churches today, uh, Brother Noel and I are just kind of talking, how's your church, Brother Noel? Oh, we're, we're getting good attendance. But of course, not all people are still coming. They're still skeptic. But how many of you knows that there's nothing to worry about? Amen? God is in full control. This is the time that we have to honor God. Amen? You know, as we, you know, as I mentioned to you, you know, Satan took advantage using this pandemic to make many Christians cold in their spiritual walk with God. They're losing their fire. They're losing their life. Why? It's a different thing when a Christian is inside the church. Amen? Because, you know, there are times that when you are all alone, okay, you personally could not take Okay, the challenge that the enemy is using against you. You need someone to be with you. Amen? Sometimes a group of people, okay, does not have enough strength to really wrestle and battle and fight, okay, against the enemy. We need the whole church. Amen? Just like what the church did for Peter. You know, as I mentioned last week, you know, the church at first, when Herod arrested James... There was no written record that the church prayed with intense, uh, 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 what, uh, passion to pray for James. Guess what happened to James? He lost his. But when Peter was arrested, that's when we read, the Bible says, and the whole church, okay, offered a constant prayer for Peter. Guess what happened? When the whole church prayed for something, God moved. And so Peter's head was spared. And this is the thing here, guys. As a church, we need to pray together. Amen? Amen. You cannot win the, the battle on your own. You know, it's one of Satan's deception to make a Christian think, I don't need anyone else. I could pray on my own. I could pray in my room. Yes, that's good. But there are times you need a group of people praying with you just like what Daniel did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to save their lives and many more lives of people. Amen? Sometimes we need the whole church to be praying together. And so it's the day, it pertains to the day of Pentecost during the early church. It is the coming of the Holy Spirit. It is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It is the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the last one here actually, Acts 2, 37 to 42. I'm not going to read to you the scriptures. It talks about the harvest of 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost. Because of the infilling, because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit on the Apostle Peter, when he preached the Word of God, 3,000 souls were convicted, repented, responded to the call of salvation. Can I tell these guys? If you want to be used by God powerfully, and God will use you as instrument in saving, is snatching one soul out of hell, you cannot do it on your own. You need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Come on, give the Lord a big hand here. That's why many Christians cannot be used by God because they lack the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Either way, either we are filled or we are not filled by the Holy Spirit. 
If we are not filled by the Holy Spirit, we will be filled by carnality and fleshliness. And you know the consequences of being filled with the flesh. Amen. I would rather be filled by the Holy Spirit. So what God is uh, sending a message here is this. In the future, God is saying, my spirit will come and fill my church. Amen. Are we the church of Christ? We are one. We are part. Amen. And the church, our church needs the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The third one, it pertains to the Old Testament saints and the raptured New Testament saints. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. It says here, <clears throat> but it's one in his own order. Watch this word. Christ the first fruits because he was the first one in human body that rose from the dead okay and has the power to raise himself from the dead with the father and with the holy spirit what's his word but it's one in his own order christ the first fruits afterward afterward we don't know how long is that okay there's a time gap afterward those who are christ at his Coming. Wow. The coming of Jesus, we all know there are two ways, right? The coming of Jesus for his church, we call it rapture. And then the second coming of Jesus to be seen by the world with the church. Amen. So this is the thing here, guys. We all know that the Bible says with the trumpet sound, with the voice of an archangel, our body will be changed into incorruptible body. Amen. And we shall meet the Lord in the air and we shall be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Why the world is suffering for seven years? And right after the seven years, Jesus will come riding on white horse. Hallelujah. Following behind him. His armies riding on white horses. Guess who are those armies? We are the raptured saints. Hallelujah. You got your white horse. You might say, I don't know how to ride a horse. It's okay. You will learn up in heaven. You got seven years. <laughs> Amen. So, it is the harvest of 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost. Wow. Wow. You see how God is so advanced in declaring what he is about to do in the future? The nation of Israel doesn't have an idea when God commanded them to observe the Feast of Weeks, which in the time of the church, they call it Pentecost because they were using a Greek language at that time. Number four, it pertains to the 144,000 raptured in the middle of tri tribulation. Revelations 14, 4. It says here, these are the ones, if you read on verse 1, there are 12,000 from each tribe of the nation of Israel. That brings the total of 144,000. These are the ones who were not defiled with women. In other words, they did not practice sexual immorality, sexual uncleanness. For they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Oh my goodness. Did you see the word? These are the ones who follow the Lambs. Which is the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you know without obedience we will not see the Lord? Amen. Hello. Okay. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Oh, let's continue verse 5. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all men and holiness without wits, without being peaceful, without walking holiness. No one will. God doesn't change in his principle. Amen. God doesn't change in his word. So, the Feast of Weeks or First Fruits or Pentecost pertains to this 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of the nation of Israel. Oh my goodness. You see how God is so far advanced in declaring what he is about to do in the future 
without the nation of Israel knowing what God is intending to do in the future. Number five, it pertains to every born again Christians, okay? John 1, uh, James chapter 1, verse 18. It says here, of his own will, <coughs> excuse me, he brought us forth by the word. Now James is talking to the Christians. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. Now what's his word? That we, James is including every born again Christians, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wow. Now I understand why God commanded the nation of Israel to observe the feast of weeks or Pentecost during the time the early church. The second one is this, the Pentecost in our present times. Acts chapter 2 verse 16 to 18. Hopefully you'll remember everything. I'm going a little kind of fast here. It says here, when, when the Holy Spirit came down, those Jewish people that scattered many different parts of the world, they were celebrating this uh, day of Pentecost. They heard the sound, you know, and then, and then where, where did the sound came from and rested? And so they followed the sound. They led them into the place where the early church uh, was. And they saw the fire and they said, oh my goodness, we're hearing them speaking in the language where we are living. And Peter stood up. As we all know, Peter preached the word. And this is one of the things that he informed them being, you know, part of the nation of Israel. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. How many of you knows that God is a God of order and a God of plan? Okay. There are time gap there. It's a process of time. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Church, can I tell these guys, how many of you know that we're living in the last days? Okay. Remember I talked to you about signs of the last days and the events of the last days, right? Signs of the last days are different from the event of the last days. One of the signs that we know that it's the last days is the coming of the Holy Spirit. Imagine this, guys. Church. How, how, how short the time we have, okay? How long ago since the Holy Spirit came and filled the church? It's been 2,000 years. You know, Peter said 1,000 years to us is one day to... How many of you know waiting for one day, two days is not too long? For God. <laughs> A lot of people have come and go. They died, okay? But how many of you know that we are so blessed, hallelujah, that Jesus is coming at our time, hallelujah. We don't know when, okay? We don't know how, but Jesus is coming again. Amen? Now, if you believe that, if you're excited for the coming of Jesus, give the Lord a big hand here. Peter said, okay, this is what is spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. God, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh of whom? Those people who made a decision in following the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't pertain to those people who doesn't want God, reject God, who doesn't believe in Jesus. It only pertains to those people who made a commitment in following the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? On all flesh. Now let me ask you this question, guys. And for those of you who are watching, do you still have flesh? Okay. I just want to make sure, okay? This doesn't talk about to those fleshly people. On all flesh. On all people. On all souls who love the Lord. And then it says here, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy Excuse me. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men's servant and on my maid servants, I will pour my spirit in those days, and they shall 
prophesy. Oh my goodness. That's why, you know, when we as a church gather together, we render God the, the praises that he deserved. We offer him the worship the, that he deserved, the praise that he deserved, the adoration, the respect. How many of you knows that God comes down and fill his church? Hallelujah. Now listen to this, guys. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not preaching to you about the infilling of the Holy Spirit because that's a different topic. Okay? But the infilling of the Holy Spirit depends on you and me. As far as the Holy Spirit is concerned, He always wants you and me to be filled by Him. But it's all up to you and me if we want to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And how much you and I need it to be filled, it's all up to you and me again. It's just like the battery. If you plug your cell phone and you could, uh, you know, you became impatient, you pull the plug out, that's how much power you will get. Hello? But if you stay too long in the presence of God, you get empowered by God. Amen? Too many Christians, when they come to the church, they're looking on their watch, on their clock. This service is too long. That's why when you leave the place, you're still weak. I would rather stay in the presence of God. Remember David said... I would rather stay one day in the presence of God than a thousand days outside. Many Christians, they don't mind spending watching movies for four hours, spending on social media for four hours without getting bored, without getting tired, spending 30 minutes, an hour in the presence of God, they complain. Those type of Christians who complain, they leave the church weak. When they come to the church weak, they leave the church weak. Because they fail to see the importance of honoring God on that day. How many of you know when we give God this day, we give God this day? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay? So, it is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Is, okay? It is one of the signs of the last day. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is still available to everyone because the rapture doesn't take place yet. It can be experienced by any Christian. Because God is not a, a respecter of a person. Amen? So, this is the thing here, guys. If you're feeling weak, you know, you feel like your spirit is dying. You compare yourself to those people who you think are strong Christian. Guys, I want you to know this, guys. God is about and ready, okay? And he desired to fill you. And it's all up to you if you want to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Amen? When you come to the church, prepare yourself to be touched by the power of God. Amen? So that when you leave this place, you're a different person when you came in. Amen? It's a kind of person that God wants you and me to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, let me just show you this quick. Okay? Ways the Holy Spirit comes upon every individual person or a church. I'm just going to make this quick and then we're going to end in a final scriptures. Let me just show you four ways how the Holy Spirit will come upon individual or a church. One is through worship. Remember, you know, when Elisha was asked to prophesy, okay, and Elisha doesn't know how to sing. You know, when you don't know how to sing, you can sing along, right? And so say, Elijah said, call, call a minstrel. You know, minstrel means uh, a singer, okay? <laughs> and so when the singer began to worship God, now can I tell this? Not just only an ordinary singer. Some people can sing good, but they're not anointed. A singer whose heart is really, truly worshiping God, Amen? What Eliza was saying there is this. Get a person who knows God personally. Get a person who has an intimate relationship with God. Who lives pure. Who lives uh, holy. Who fear God. Who love God. Get that kind of singer. Get that kind of worshiper. And so whoever the person came. You know this person began to worship God. And the presence of God comes down. And then Elisha began to prophesy. That's why thank God to all our praise team. Amen. Can we give our praise team a big hand here? They worship God. They know how to worship God. They know how to be in the presence of God. Amen. 
Amen, church. Amen, worship team. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When sister Abby is saying, you know, the gates of hell is shaken up. <laughs> the devil gets scared. <laughs> okay, through worship and David. Remember when, when King Saul was being oppressed and distressed by an evil spirit? And they said, oh, king, you know, you are being distressed by an evil spirit. Call a, call, call a psalmist. So guess who they call? David, who knows God, who has an intimate relationship with God, who just loved worshiping God and praising God in the presence of God. And so when David began to play his harp, okay, and David said, ding, 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 okay. And the Bible says, an evil spirit left soul, a distressing spirit. Can I tell these guys? For those of you who are watching, if you feel distressed, if you feel oppressed, if you feel down, if you feel depressed, you can worship God wherever you are. Amen. Or come and join us on a Sunday service and worship God along with us. Amen. There is a deliverance, a miracle of deliverance. We speak the name of Jesus, the name above every name. Hallelujah. Second one is through prayer. Acts 1.14 and Acts 4.31. Remember when the, when the apostle was being intimidated and uh, reprimanded by those religious leaders. We command you not to preach this name. We command you not to preach this word. And so they said, you know, you judge. We Either we obey man or we obey God. And they went back to the church. They reported everything. And the church, rather than uh, cowarding, rather than hiding, rather than stopping, they went into the presence of God. And they lift their voices up. And they said, God, you know what they said, God. Lord, fill us more with power and boldness so that we will preach your word boldly. Guess what the Holy Spirit did? The Holy Spirit came down and filled the church. And the Bible says they spoke the word with boldness. And so if you want to be bold in sharing your faith to others, there's no other way but to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? You might say, what about those bald? It's okay. We have to be bold. Amen? So prayer. And then through hearing the word of God, Peter went to Cornelius and his household and his servants and his friends and relatives. While Peter was speaking the word, they were so attentive in listening and receiving the word of God. The Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon those who hear the word of God. Can I tell these guys? That's why it's so important for Christians to come to the church. Amen. To listen to the word of God, when we hear God's word, it's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to fill his church. Amen. Lastly, through laying hands. Okay. Through laying on of hands. Acts chapter 8 verse 17. When Peter, the apostles, uh, went to the Samaritan believers, when Philip preached the word, many believers got converted. And Peter said, have you received the Holy Spirit? How many of you have been baptized? Oh, you know, we want to be baptized. We have no, you know, they say all, the, all kinds of support. And, and Peter prayed for them, and they got all filled with the Holy Spirit by laying on of hands. Now, of course, you just don't be lay hands by someone you don't know. You have to be lay hands on someone you know. Amen? <clears throat> Excuse me. So those are the four ways. Lastly, and we will end here. Everyone will say? Amen. Okay, now I know you want me to stop. Okay. <laughs> Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The purpose of the infilling of the Holy Spirit to a person or the church. What is the purpose of God? As he has a purpose when he commanded the nation of Israel to observe the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost in our present days. He has a purpose why he wants the church to observe this day. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Look at this. This is his purpose and it doesn't stop from here, it continued from generation to generation until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. It says, there, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The Feast of Pentecost, it's all about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes without 
purpose without, re I mean, without any purpose and reason. He has a purpose why he comes, and that's to empower us. It says here, when a person is being filled, they will receive power from the Holy Spirit. When they receive power, they will become an effective witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Okay. You know, the Bible says, you know, he that winneth soul is wise. Amen. One of the way we can be wise today is to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. Amen. When we are being filled, we have enough strength, power, boldness to witness to someone that God wants to save using you and me. Amen. The Bible says, Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed. Of the gospel of some people, they're not ashamed to gossip. They said, I am not ashamed to gossip. No, 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 no. It should not be that way. I, not, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God unto. So you want to see your, <clears throat> your friends, families to be saved, pray for them. Okay, if you're too far away, God will use, okay, believers just like you and me to save them. They have families as well. They are praying that God will use believers to reach out to their relatives and loved ones. Amen. And we are being God's instrument in reaching out to their loved ones and friends. Amen. So the day of Pentecost, it's all about the coming of the Holy Spirit in filling His church to be empowered to be an effective witness for the world. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up here. <clears throat> um, we're going to have a communion. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask my two elder brother here. Uh, I call them Kuya. You know Kuya, Brother Noel? means older brother. Okay, so Kuya Noel, come up here and Kuya Dudley. Uh, <laughs> give Kuya Noel and Kuya Dudley here. I'm going to make I'm going to uh, ask uh, Kuya Noel I would like to ask uh, Kuya Noel first, okay, to read uh, verse 23 all the way to verse 24 before we partake the bread. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. Dear God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, as we partake of this uh, bread and, uh, and the drink, the cup, God. May it be a blessing to our body, God. May we also realize how important this is in our life. Lord, we just don't want to just take it because it's communion. But we take it for a reason. We take it to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That this would help us to live a good life. That we be shining examples for others to see who we are. Lord, we want to stand strong. We want to stand bold. And we want to stand in your Holy Spirit. In your present and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. That's perfect. Pastor Dudley, would you please read this portion? Verse 11. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see it. <laughs> okay. This cup, this. I can read it. You want me to hold it? Okay, I'll hold it. Thank you. 
This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remember now the one drop of blood of Jesus Christ could heal every single one of us who's ever lived past, present, and future in this whole world. The symbol of the blood that we are about to receive can do anything to fix anything that's wrong in your body right now. Father, we just, as we receive, as we receive the symbolic blood of Jesus Christ, that we receive his blood that intended from the beginning of time even from the Garden of Eden, when you first shed blood, even from when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, that we would be healed and walk in divine health. So we receive that healing now as we partake. In Jesus' name, and by the blood of Jesus, amen. Thank you. Can we give our elder brother here a... Uh, uh, an offer. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dudley, Brother Noel. God bless you. Can I call the worship team? Let's worship the Lord one last time. Amen. How many of you wants to be filled by the Holy Spirit more? Amen. Can we sing that? We speak the name of Jesus. Can we sing that song? And, um, you know, as we spend a few moments in the presence of God, Begin to commune with the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill you up. Amen. Fill you up to the brim. Overflowing. Hallelujah. Just say, Lord, touch me. I need you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
softly as we close in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands up. Reach out to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I need you in my life. Apart from you, God, I am weak. I am nothing. I'm powerless. Just invite the Holy Spirit to fill you up. It doesn't matter what you've been, what you've done. The Holy Spirit is able to break every strongholds down, even in your mind, in your flesh, in your spirit. The Holy Spirit has the power to make you whole, to make you strong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we just don't want the word to be just the word to be just the knowledge of God we want your word Lord we want to experience your word oh God Lord come and fill us come and fill your people even those who are watching online God we pray that you will stretch forth your hand and fill them Lord 
Anoint them, God. Empower them. Yes, Lord, and bless their life, Lord. And Father, we that are here today, we humbly pray, God, that you will stretch forth your hand. Fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint us, O God. Empower us. Fill us, Lord God. Baptize us, Lord. Yes, Lord, fill us, O God. Fill us, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We honor you. We give you praise, God. We give you thanks, Lord. We bless your name. Father, I pray for everyone that have come here today. May your face shine upon them. May your glory, may your glory and favor go with them and before them. I declare, God, every weapons and lies and skins and fiery darts and strongholds that the enemy form against your people against your children, against our homes and families, against our health and wealth and finances, Lord, are broken down and destroyed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your people are blessed and not cursed. Your people are triumphant, <coughs> victorious and not defeated in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce, Lord, I declare, O oh God, healing favor oh God deliverance miracle miracle of healing miracle of deliverance miracle of prosperity and success Lord miracle of peace and joy and a miracle of fruitfulness God in the mighty name of Jesus Lord we give you all the glory and the honor and praise bless now your children as you bless their coming in bless their going out oh God in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. God bless you all and enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you.